Hello. <clears throat> you can think of your business as having seven key elements to it. Now, where a lot of small business owners and self-employed people are is they're good at operations, so they're good at doing something. So if you've ever heard of a book or read a book called The E-Myth, The E-Myth Revisited, that's the point that Michael Gerber makes in that book. A lot of people are in business, not necessarily because they're business people as such, but because they were good at what they do and either they lost their job, they left their job, they fell out with the boss or, you know, various things have happened and they've ended up setting up their own business. So most people are sort of strong on what they do, which is operations. And that's what's known as working in the business. And that's where a lot of people sort of stay, if you like. But to go beyond that and to actually have a business that's a separate thing to you and what you do, uh, and a business that will therefore run itself when you're not there, a business that you could sell if you ever wanted to, then you need to get these other elements in place. Uh, now, what I put in the middle here is a big clock because the big thing is if you're busy working in your business and you don't take the time to step away from that to work on your business, then you'll never get around to doing all these other things. But you need to get all these other things in place before you have this business that you can call a separate business to you as being self-employed now there's various you know things you can read about this and hear about this but but basically one of the things i like hearing is that if, if you're at this stage you're self-employed which means you're your own boss which then logically follows that you're probably not the best boss you've ever worked for either because just because you're good at operations doesn't mean you're a good boss so if you're your own boss it doesn't still make you a good boss so I think that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you do take the time to step aside, then you need to get these other elements in place. And the first starting point would be you need to have written goals. Uh, Brian Tracy and several other people reckon that 3% of adults have written goals, and they're the ones who are you know, completely successful. Most people don't have written goals and basically don't, you know, don't know where they're going and, and do get there. <laughs> So once you've got goals, which are, you know, for you personally, that then translates into the strategies and plans that you want for your business. So the next key element beyond operations is actually having strategies in place, plans. Now, moving this way, you then need to understand your key numbers, because when I work with anyone, I always look at their key numbers first, because it's astonishing how much difference you can make to your profit by just understanding what four or five key numbers represent and by working out how you can make small improvements in them and generally you can make these improvements uh, and basically if you make sort of 10% improvements in four or five key numbers you can normally double the bottom line profit and a 10% improvement in four or five numbers translates to 1% a week in, in one field and anyone if they're taking the time out of the business here to work on their business can surely deliver a 1% improvement in one of the five key areas per week, which would then give you five lots of 10, 50% over the year, so the 10%, and that will double your bottom line profit. And for many business owners, actually, if they do that, they can actually end up doubling that figure and it won't take them a year. It could be, you know, it could be a lot shorter than that. So it's taking the time to understand your key numbers and then work on them. And that really, I suppose, is your starting point. Now, once you move beyond that, you then, to expand your business, you'll probably need to engage in some form of sales and marketing. Now, again, a common error is that many people believe that they can do their own sales and marketing, which, you know, you can really. It's just that people who are professional in this area know much better how to do this than people who are amateurs. So, you know, everyone thinks they can do their own sales and marketing, but it's not necessarily true. So everyone thinks, for example, that a few posts on LinkedIn like this and Facebook, etc., will do the trick but you need to have an underlying strategy and you need to you know there's a lot more to it than that than that you need to identify who your ideal customer or client is you know what their psychographics and demographics are i.e the the physical numbers like where where they live how much they earn what they do etc but also how they think what their main issues and problems are and then you need to tailor your own proposition to meet that so your unique perceived benefit or selling point however you want to describe it and then you need to have systems in place to nurture them along their buyer's journey to convert them from prospects, well, suspects at one end into prospects, then into future buyers, then into now buyers, and then into customers. And you need processes in place for all of that. I'll, I'll come back to that. 
So that's the sales and marketing. Now, as the business expands, you'll be dealing more and more with people. And now, again, that's another huge area. So first of all, you've got customers, which links up here. But you also may have either teams or you may outsource. But either way, you need to be dealing with the right sort of people and getting the right sort of people to um, you know, be productive from your point of view, I suppose. So when we talk about teams, we then into things like DISC and um, there's, there's various other, I um, can't remember one off the top of my head, but there's various other methods for evaluating different personality types and behaviours. Uh, you need people who are good at various different skill areas, different uh, abilities. Uh, it's been estimated that there are seven different types of intelligence and most of us are really good in one or a few of those areas, but very few are, you know, excellent across the board. So you need a you need a combination of different levels of skill and intelligence in different areas and different personality types, so that everyone gels as a team. So I mean, that's a huge area. And if you haven't got expertise within the house, you may need to work with someone who is an HR consultant or knows what you know knows a bit about this sort of um, area. And then. Once you've got all these in place, you still haven't got a business that will run without you being there or that you could sell unless you've got systems in place. So you need to be able to systemize your business. And what I mean by that is you need a, a, an organ. So Michael Gerber, for example, in his book talks about having knowing your organization chart, mapping it out, putting various roles into the organization chart and then working out what the functions are in each of those roles, what they're supposed to be doing and then working out systems, writing out systems so that anyone who takes on a particular role on a particular day you could step right in and follow the process follow the system and the business will still run because they know what they're doing so it's called systemization and that is really important and if you've got a systemized business it becomes worth a lot more in terms of potential sale than if you haven't got a systemized business because it means it's a business you can sell and the other thing is if you haven't got a systemized business you won't be able to make a clean break if you did sell at any stage because you'd be required to do an earn out period um, because you'd need to be there and generally that means you won't get anywhere near as much proceeds if you like because by the time the earn out period's over you'll probably find that the numbers that were agreed haven't been hit etc cetera, etc cetera. so you need you need the systems in place to ever be able to make a clean break so there you have it now the interesting thing is if you were to take your own business and you were to draw a line here north in the middle 10 on the outside or five on the outside whichever works for you and do that round and then score yourself, then if you had a really properly functioning business, you'd be sort of eight, nine, 10 on all of those. You'd have a fairly round wheel. Whereas if you were the other extreme, which is you're good at something, but you're not really good at the rest of it, are you good at operations? You know, you just have a, a spike there and then everything else will be like very bumpy. So it would be an interesting exercise just to see how rounded your wheel of business is. Uh, so there you have it, the key areas that you need to develop to have a business that runs when you're not there uh, and a business that you could sell should you ever wish to. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for watching.